Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about how the actual browser works. In the previous video, we have seen about the render layout. So, what is this render layout and how it works and all those things we have seen it. So, we will go a little bit further deep into this one and we will see the basically how the browser actually works. We will see. And then afterwards, we will go one by one, one by one, everything. We need to learn about more about this one. So, the people who are new to this one, what actually inside the browser, how it will work, the mechanism and all those things. So it is very important for us to know. So that is the reason I am explaining you this one. So how the browser actually works. Let's try to see. In this video, we will see how the browser works. The browser working mechanism can be broken into four easy steps. So these are not the standard steps. Just according to me, in order to to understand by you so very easily so i have broken this one into four easy steps so this normally we can do it so it may it may you can break it out into something like five steps or something like that so i have broken it out into a four easy steps let's see what are these four easy steps the first step is the fetching of the data fetching of this data means if you try to see in our network tab we will be able to see the resources we will try to uh, the browser is trying to get the data from the network so that is nothing but the first step that is fetching of the data it has to get, fetch the data from somewhere so it can be a network or from somewhere it can be so it needs to fetch the data so the second step is that data needs to be processed so first step is fetching the data and the second step is processing the fetched data once processed the browser can then display it to your screen so next one is the displaying it to your screen to make it easier it can implement the storage functionality so to make it easier so it implements the storage functionality also this is the fourth step third step is displaying it to your screen and the fourth step is to make it easier implementation of this storage functionality we will try to learn one by one afterwards so what are the four steps the first step is the fetching of the data the second step is processing the fetched data and the third step is displaying it to your screen and the fourth step is implementing the storage functionality so these are the four steps how the browser renders the screen output it is important to note that the browser like chrome and also many others like firefox safari or anything run multiple instances of the rendering engine so the browser like chrome and all those things it will run the multiple instances of this rendering engine so each tab you have opened is running in a separate environment a separate process so whenever you open a new tab in the chrome or anything so each one has a separate environment and a separate process as you people all aware of this one so the variable a present in the first tab cannot be available in the second tab so these both are two are in the separate separate process and a separate environment so let's look at one each one of these steps in more detail so we have seen the four steps right the browser thing so let's look at each one of these steps in more details the four steps are nothing but fetching processing displaying and also the storage so these are the four steps first we'll try to learn about this fetching the data so what is this fetching and how it will fetch and what are the things involved in this fetching let's try to see firstly we have just said that browser has to fetch something right well what does it fetch it fetches things like html jpeg pdf css json even the javascript so these are all the things with the different types of things which it which the browser can fetch from the network it can be an html data or a jpeg pdf css json or even javascript also so it will fetch the data so from where it will fetch these are the things where does this data fetch it from that's where the network layer so you know about these all application layer network layer transport layer these all physical layer right so these are the four steps or five steps you will be involving application layer uh, and the next one is the comes the net uh, network layer transport layer data layer and also the last one is the physical layer so like this you will be having <clears throat> so that's where the network layer comes into the picture the network layer accepts the url entered into the address bar from the user so if you, if you open the browser you will type the address http product http something www.example.com like that you will be entering so the network layer accepts the url entered into the address bar by the user this network layer uses the http or ftp protocol to fetch the resources and once it fetches 
it feeds the data to a subsystem called the render engine so we have learned about the subsystems in our previous video and it will pass the data to the rendering engine so the network layer uses the http protocol so this uses the http protocol and it fetches it once it is fetched it will pass to the rendering engine it normally gives the rendering engine this data in a byte size so it will not give you the entire data it will give the data in a byte size and it does this because to improve the performance the network layer the network layer usually looks for any local cache for the new requested urls first the network layer normally what it will try to do is it normally looks for any local cache local cache means if there is any cache available for this requested url and if nothing is found then it creates a new http packet so this is the main thing so the network layer first checks for the cache so whether any cache is available or not then afterwards it will check it so that is the reason if you refresh the page second time so you'll be able to see 304 304 304 from cache from cache from the network layer so that means it is first taking it from the cache if it is nothing is found means it will try to send a new http packet brand new if the requested website does implement a cache so if the requested website has an implementation of the cache a copy of the data is made in the app cache or the service workers for the next time visit so this comes under the cache concepts and all those things we'll discuss in, in the next course or anything about the service workers and all those things but if the website requested website has an implementation of the cache thing means then a copy of the data is made in app cache or the service worker. The network layer plays a huge role in the user experience. And oh sorry. The network layer plays a huge role in the user experience and it can be a bottleneck in the website performance. If you don't get this right. So here you are fetching the resources from the thing, right? So it plays a very huge role in the user experience. And it becomes a very bottleneck in the website performance if you don't get this right because browser will have to wait for the remote data and the content in it and for receiving the content it needs to wait um, it needs to wait until the data is written only then only it can be displayed to the screen right so that is the reason network layer plays a very important huge role in the user and also in the website performance various techniques can be used to reduce this impact on the user experience so there are different types of techniques are there which we need which we can be using to reduce this impact so we will see all these things in the later in this course but you need to understand this the role of this network layer so network layer just fetches the data whatever the requested url is written so it, it tries to check whether the local cache is present or not in the browser if it is present means it will send it or otherwise it will try to send a brand new http packet to receive the data so that is the thing and it will send it to the rendering engine after the browser has fetched something it has to process the information and remember the network layer oh sorry and network layer has provided the data to the browser at this point so it has provided the data of the browser in the byte size right so it has to process the information now the next process the next thing thing is to process the information the browser then needs to take this data and it has to feed to other layers the other layers are nothing but the render engine javascript engine and the ui backend so these are the things so when the browser receives the data it needs to pass these things to other layers like render engine javascript engine and the ui backend these are all separate process separate layers that have to work together let's talk about each of them in the next video so these are all the separate layers so after receiving the data so after the pitching the resource it needs to process the data so now for processing the data the browser will send it to the other layers that is nothing but javascript engine render engine and the ua backend so these are all separate process separate layers that work together so let's talk about these five things in the next video so this is all about how actually the network layer and all those things works if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you